Oh, my fingers need to stay straight, though. Physical therapy is a big part of Robin Spence Alvers' life. I still am working on my hand. I'm not giving up on my hand. You could say it's a full-time job. It's just a way to stretch out my arm and my hand. See this? I used to not be able to do this. She's come a long way since October 15, 2010, when she suffered a life-changing stroke. Well, you know, I'd like to say I'm 100%, but I'm not. But I get things done that I want to do. Robin had a thousand things to do that day. After all, her daughter was being honored as a homecoming queen nominee at halftime during the Norfolk High School homecoming football game. Today it was a special day for her. I, being a mother and it was her senior year, I just wanted to make every day special for her. She saw no real sign of what was about to come. Really, I had no symptoms. It was just a traditional day. Or did she? Then we went back behind the bleachers and um, I just jokingly said to all of my family, oh my goodness, I feel like I could have a heart attack. But I took an Advil, so I'm okay. And everybody just like, are you okay then? And I said, well, I'm fine. You know, but I just had kind of a headache and I was just nervous inside. Robin chalked up the headache to stress, went home, and after making an early morning breakfast for her daughter's friends, went to bed. And then I cleaned up the kitchen, and then it was about 2 o'clock that night, so I just went to bed at round 2. The next morning, a phone call woke her up. And it's my sister-in-law, and she just wanted to know how the night went, how everything was, how the football, if they won or not. And we were just visiting, and my sister-in-law said, um, are you okay? Because she said, I cannot understand what you're saying. And I said, I'm completely fine. I said... I'm just a little tired yet. We were up late last night. But everything wasn't fine. In fact, something was very wrong. I just knew something was up because she was slurring her words too and it just, things weren't sounding right. And I said, I'm fine. And she said, so I think something is really wrong. And I said, no, I'm fine, Brooke. And she said, I'm calling 911. She said, I think something's wrong with you. And then that's when I tried to get up and I was just trying to, I was trying to get up out of bed to get her and I could not move really on this, my left side. I was aware of a few of the signs of a, what causes a stroke, um, but I didn't necessarily know what exactly it was caused by a stroke or what, what it even was at the time. And so like when I, when she was slurring her words, I thought something was not right. So that's what kind of triggered it for me. And I didn't know it at the time, but I guess my face had dropped. And I didn't know that because everything to me felt completely normal. So normal, Robin refused to go to the hospital by ambulance. Oh yeah, we're freaking out. I mean, this isn't supposed to be happening to 40 year olds, you know. Her husband Brad got her in the car and rushed her to the ER. Well, it's, her mouth kind of drooped a little bit. And, uh, she, she was having a hard time walking to the car. Doctors confirmed what everyone else suspected. Sometime overnight, Robin suffered a stroke. They talked while well, she may be in a wheelchair the rest of her life. And Robin's carotid artery was close to 100% blocked. They've never cleared it. I'm just, I just live today with it. And getting her back to 100% wouldn't be easy. For us to walk from here to the kitchen, you know, it's. No problem, but for her, she has to think every step and everything. I had no use of any of my body on the left side, so it was just kind of like a dead weight. Let's not make it like so tough. Robin went to work to get past her physical challenges. She had to work to retrain her brain. Going to see how long you've been going. Her family was with her every step of the way. Well, I think support is your family. That's the most important thing, and friends. Lots of friends, but I have a very strong family. Feels pretty good, doesn't it? The American Heart Association has been working for more than 80 years to reduce disability and death through education. Robin now understands the connection family history plays. I definitely have history on my mom's side and my dad's mother. My, mom and, my mom's mom and dad had um, strokes, and my grandpa had had his carotid surgery done, too, when he was in his 80s. And then on my mom, my dad's side, it was my grandmother that had had a stroke. 
For years, Robin thought that by putting her family first, she had to neglect taking care of herself. Well, I think that women just needed to make sure that they're making time for themselves. I know that's easier said than done, but I think they need to. With diet and exercise as part of her daily routine, she's doing just that. My thinking before this is we're 48 years old. We, you know, we don't need to worry about stuff like that. It's, it happens to older people, and the, which is absolutely wrong. It can happen to anybody. Two years after the stroke, Robin will tell you she has a lot to be thankful for. Well, because I lived. And a lot of people don't live through a stroke. Brad and Brooke have a lot to be thankful for, too. I'm, I'm just so proud of her. I mean, from seeing her from when it to now, it's just amazing. She amazes me every day. Mom, um, I'm really proud of you for all the progress that you've made, um, for all the motivation that you've given not only to me, but everybody around you and all of our family to see you working so hard and pushing yourself. You're just incredible, all the progress you've made, and I love you, Mom. Okay, and that's my big workout.